The Bellamy Mansion is a great place for a social studies field trip. Students can go back through time as they explore one of Wilmington's historical landmarks. is one of the nation's premier architectural and historical treasures. The lavish columned mansion evidences the South's exuberant classicism on the eve of the Civil War. Its design reflects the geography of the area and the economic system of the time. Sitting on a bluff, its many large doors and windows catch breezes off the Cape Fear River. The house sits forward on a lot, allowing for outbuildings and workspaces in the rear, including a now rare and significant urban slave quarters. The entire complex was home to the 11-member Bellamy family and their nine enslaved domestic workers. Built by free and enslaved African Americans, the house is a testament to the artisanship of these talented men. The mansion was built for John and Eliza Bellamy and their family. John Dillard Bellamy married Eliza McKellen Harris on June 12, 1839. Over the next 22 years, Dr. and Ms. Bellamy would welcome nine children to their family. The Bellamy family continued to live in the mansion until the last remaining daughter passed away. After that, the Bellamy mansion stayed empty for a while until one day in 1972, fourth generation Bellamy started the Bellamy Mansion Incorporation in hopes to preserve and restore the historic home. Unfortunately, that same year, a fire damaged the plasterwork and a lot of the original wood in the home, which made restoration even more difficult. Luckily, Bellamy Mansion Incorporation and volunteers worked hard to raise money for the renovations. In 1989, the corporation decided to donate the property to the Historic Preservation Foundation of North Carolina. This turned the mansion into a public historic site. Over the next few years, the necessary interior repairs were completed and in 1994, the Bellamy Mansion Museum officially opened. The now restored slave quarters on the property are one of the best examples of urban quarters in the state and one of the very few open to the public. There were quite a few enslaved African Americans living in this building, including the housekeeper, cook, laundress, and nurses, and any of their children. Two male slaves that lived on the Bellany property included the butler and coachman, a laborer and handyman. More than likely, they resided in small rooms above the carriage house. The architecture of the slave quarters is very distinct and done very purposefully. The attractive brick walls on the shutters were a sign of social superiority for the Bellamy family. Its slave quarters was also meant to be seen from public by the street level. Having a visible, pleasing slave quarter gave the impression of social status for the family. There are no windows on the rear of the slave quarters, meaning enslaved workers could only look out and view the main house, which they were close to. High walls, sometimes more than a foot thick, surrounded the entire property, forming a compound where workers would spend their day. Standing in the middle of the plot, the enslaved worker could see only a maze of brick and stone. The whole design was concentric, drawing the life of the slaves inward, towards the house. After the Civil War, this building became the servants' quarters. <laughs> 